It's around 9pm on Sunday the 25th of June 2023 and officers from the Albuquerque Police Department are being called to the Cinemark Century Rioplex 24 and XD Movie Theater to report of an active shooter. By this point in 2023, there had been a whopping 326 mass shootings across the United States. So, it's no surprise then that the police department pulled out all the stops. You see, for those of you who aren't aware, the 20th deadliest mass shooting event to take place in the United States, the 2012 Aurora incident, occurred within a movie theater. In fact, it had taken place at the same movie theater chain, Century. James Holmes took the lives of 12 people on that day in 2012. A further 70 were injured. In terms of injuries alone, it ranks second out of all mass shootings to have occurred in the United States. Fast forwarding to June of 2023 then, and the Albuquerque Police Department were taking no chances. Show me your hands. Do you have a gun? Okay, stand back here, ma'am. Okay, do we have somebody with a gun? Where's he at? Where's the guy with the gun? I know, just keep pressure on it for now. Stay right here, okay, boss? Put pressure on it? Okay. Can you walk? No. If you need me to, I will. Please, sir, could you take me? Uh, we have anywhere we can stage 4355. I've been shot. Do you have a firearm on you? I do not. Okay, make sure you know not I am Please, I just I'm Red you Cross trained. Can I? Yeah, if you can assist, man, we're trying to figure out where the shooter is. Please, sir. I'm bleeding. Right where did you get shot from and who did you get shot by? I, I don't know. It was just felt like it, felt like it came from this way. Where were you at? I was standing on the side, like, I was pushed up. And everybody just kept on the side of where? Where? That was in the movies. Which one? It was. It was in the movie. It, Fifteen. Movie Fifteen. Yes. Hey, right. Sam Twenty Five PD and being advised it was in here to Fifteen. Okay. Just keep with me, okay? Okay. Can I see? Where do you go? Hey, do you go this way, sir? Oh. Keep pressure on it. Do you guys need a? I have a. Uh, do you have a medical? Do you have a chest? Do you have a chest? Is he shot? Shot. Did you put pressure on it? Yeah, I haven't put pressure on it, dude. Do you have an aid bag? Sam 25 to those units. Our air is 10 3. We have an active shooter at Central Rio 24. You need to switch to another air. Get eyes on the building. Uh, just one of those. I think those are chest compressions. Okay. See if we can use those. That's uh, all I got. Get a chest seal.
police department. Put your hands up now. Thankfully, ladies and gentlemen, a mass shooting incident never occurred. However, sadly, something did happen, and the circumstances, well, to say they were disturbing would be an understatement. No Hard Feelings, a movie where a 32-year-old Uber driver called Maddie Barker, played by Jennifer Lawrence, answers a Craigslist dating ad placed by the mother and father of an introverted teen boy preparing for college. I won't spoil the plot, but I'm pretty sure if you haven't seen the movie, you can see where the story ends up going. The film was scheduled for release on the 23rd of June, 2023, and looking back, it did okay on its opening weekend, meaning screenings for the movie were relatively busy. To no surprise then, some opted to choose the Sunday viewing. For 52-year-old army vet Michael Tenorio and his wife Trina, that was the exact case, a quiet date night. When the couple arrived at the Cinemark Century Rioplex in Albuquerque just prior to 9pm on Sunday the 25th, seats were available but there was one slight issue. Where they wanted to sit, row F, had seats available but not next to each other. This was no problem according to the ticket usher who gave them tickets for seats 8 and 11. The usher told the couple that if they asked the people sitting in seats 9 and 10 to move down one, everyone could sit where they wanted to. It'd be no problem. However, it was. After grabbing some snacks, Michael and Trina would head down to screen 15. They sat in seats 8 and 9. The people who were supposed to be in seats 9 and 10 weren't present. A few moments later though, 19-year-old Enrique Padilla and his girlfriend who hasn't been named arrived. They were the couple who had pre-booked seats 9 and 10. A friendly conversation between the two groups started. Enrique politely asked them to move seats. But in response, Michael explained that movie theatre staff told them it was okay to use one of the seats. Enrique didn't really like that response though. Things went left quickly and an argument broke out. To try and calm tensions, Enrique's girlfriend went to grab theatre staff. When the manager arrived, they apologised for the inconvenience, and for the mishap, they told Enrique and his girlfriend to head down to the front desk once the movie had finished, and they'd receive a full refund. It seemed initially as if the pair were okay with that outcome. They sat next to Michael and Trina. But over the next few moments, Enrique stood up and threw a tub of popcorn over Trina after seemingly being commanded to do so by his girlfriend. A witness would later tell reporters that the girlfriend whispered in Enrique's ear and then he threw the snack. After the popcorn was thrown, Michael sprang to Trina's defense and pushed Enrique. That push sent him flying. What was his response? Firing six rounds towards Michael. We continue following developing news this morning. Albuquerque police say that at least one person is dead and another is injured after being shot at an Albuquerque movie theater. News 13's Carla Sosa is live here with details. Good morning, Carla. Good morning, David. Officials tell us officers responded to the Century Rio Theater near I-25 and Jefferson after nine last night. Officers on scene quickly found the first victim injured outside of the theater. Another person was found inside one of the theaters dead from their gunshot wounds. At this point, police believe the incident was not random. Two of the six bullets would hit Michael. An off-duty police officer rushed to his aid. However, he would sadly be pronounced dead at the scene. Luckily, no one else was hit. After shooting Michael, Enrique would flee. He headed outside of the cinema with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. His girlfriend didn't initially follow, rather attacked Trina as she was by her husband's side. Earlier on in the video, you would have spotted Enrique speaking with officers. Stay right here, okay boss? Put pressure on it? Okay. Can you walk? No. If you need me to, I will. Please, sir, could you take me? Uh, we have anywhere we can stage 4355. I've been shot. Do you have I'm... a firearm on you? I do not. Okay, make sure you're not Please. on. I am, Please, I just I'm Red Cross trained. Can I? Yeah, if you can assist, man, we're trying to figure out where the shooter is. Please, sir. I'm bleeding. Right where did you get yeah. shot from and who did you get shot by? I, I don't know. It was just felt like it felt like it came from this way. Where were you at? I was standing on the side, like. I was pushed up and everybody just kept On the side of where? Where? Yeah, I was in the movies. Which one? It was it was in the movie, it's 15. Movie 15? Yes. Alright, so I'm 
LIPD and being advised it was in gear to 15. Just keep with me, okay? Okay, and I see you. Where did you go? Where did you go, Mr. Wayson? Keep pressure on it. Do you guys need a... I have a... Uh, Enrique was rushed to hospital for his gunshot injury. He was initially treated as a victim rather than a suspect, but over the course of the quick police investigation, it was clear that he was the shooter. And once he was released from the hospital, he was arrested and charged with murder, shooting at an occupied building, and tampering with evidence. During the few court hearings since his arrest, his lawyers have stated that Enrique was the innocent party during this incident. After all, he was pushed and this caused him to open fire in self-defense. However, the judge overseeing the case sided with the prosecution, stating, quote, you can't create the situation and then say, well, I was acting in self-defense when you created that situation. Enrique's bail request was denied during a bond hearing. He's to stay in jail until he goes on trial in the near future. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you destroy not just one, but two families within moments. That split-second decision has caused so much pain and suffering. He's not just took a father away from his family, because we know Michael had at least one child, but he's took himself away from his own family as well. And because of what? A literal movie theatre seat. During my research for this case, I came across a Redditor who posted about the shooting. He was there on that day in June of 2023. Although he wasn't in screen 15, I think his testimony really paints a picture of what it was like for the majority of moviegoers. The incident was in Theatre 15. I was in Theatre 16 watching Guardians. My friend, wife and I all heard what sounded like a gunshot or series of shots, as did everyone in our theatre. This was during a violent, loud scene in the movie. People near us were wondering out loud if it was a part of the movie or not. We couldn't tell what was going on. No one told us to evacuate. No one told us to shelter in place. We received no messaging and the movie just continued. It wasn't until we tried to leave the theatre after the movie ended that the couple sitting next to us talked about an active shooter in the theater we didn't even know if they were serious but we decided to evacuate via the emergency exit and others followed us we were literally just sitting ducked in the theater for more than 15 minutes as the movie ended with no word of any issue when we saw the front of the parking lot there were 20 to 30 cop cars that's when we knew it was serious i understand why cinemark slash rio wouldn't send someone into the line of fire with the shooting being so close but it feels so reckless icky being home now not knowing they did nothing to warn any of us in that theater 10 feet away from a shooting they were aware of they need to figure a way to send a digital message to our screen other screens were cut off as i've read and people were told to evacuate that just simply didn't happen for us despite being less than 10 feet across the hall 